New York City is the concrete jungle where big dreams are made of. But it's also this, a quiet coastal enclave that's the site of the most important event in the life cycle of one of the most important creatures on the planet. I'm with a professor from Kingsborough Community College who's doing some important work saving an animal that might very well have had a role in saving your or someone you love's life. Horseshoe crabs are far older than dinosaurs. They're older than dinosaurs. Yeah. And they managed to stick around this place. They are a living fossil. Um, 450 million years of evolution and the fossil remains that we found look remarkably similar to the modern day horseshoe crabs. They actually um, have uh, been able to extract a medical compound from the blood of horseshoe crabs, which is used to detect bacterial contamination in surgical equipment. So if you have ever had any kind of medical intervention, stitches, even uh, a vaccination, yeah. the sterility and safety of any surgical equipment, even dental equipment, would have been virtually guaranteed by Limulus amoebocyte lysate, or LAL, which is an extract from horseshoe crab blood. Thank it's you, miss. All of this habitat is kind of the remnant of what used to be a bigger wetland. Uh, much of it has been filled in and modified. So all of this data feeds into a bigger study, a broader investigation to try to understand the population dynamics of horseshoe crabs. Uh, our ultimate goal is to increase the levels of protection of these animals and the habitats that they rely upon. My name is Adam Paris. I'm the executive director of the Science and Resilience Institute at Jamaica Bay. Our vision is to pursue a model of collaboration between scientists, agencies, and community groups to improve the health and resilience of Jamaica Bay and the surrounding waters in New York City. To have clean air, food, water, um, we have to have healthy habitats. Species use um, habitat wherever they can find it, um, and we, they are more resilient than we give them credit for. There are literally hundreds of species, um, birds, fish, uh, invertebrates that use Jamaica Bay on an annual basis. Horseshoe crabs um, frequent Jamaica Bay and use some of the shoreline habitats as spawning grounds and return perennially to Jamaica Bay. Right now we are at Plum Beach. This is one of New York State's most important breeding beaches for horseshoe crabs. Whoa, it's not going to score ink or anything, is it? Uh, no, but this is a live male horseshoe crab. And um, Hello, sir. We can tell that he's a male because he has these boxing gloves here, these larger appendages that yeah. are designed specifically for grabbing onto to a female shell. To hold on to the ladies. Yep. So if you ever see a horseshoe crab that's on its back like this and it's still alive and kicking, Should you uh, help it? do the right thing and flip it over. Because that's what always made me sad when I was a kid and those nature things, they just showed you a thing dying and dying. I'm like, okay, why don't they just flip it over? Can they see through this? Yeah, they actually have a lot of optic sensors. So they have um, eyes here. They kind of have optic cells all along the front of their shell. They have what looks like a nose, but that's also used for light reception. And even along the tail, they have light receptors. Citizen science is the new way. And uh, this is one of the things that I do with my students. They don't have to be professional scientists. The resilience of the bay for future generations is absolutely critical to our mission. Um, and part of that actually, and part of our mission, is to help educate and train people who live in and around the Bay, the students who become the resilience leaders of tomorrow. I was pretty terrified the first time I saw one, but I realized that they're really super harmless and more beneficial than anything than harmless to us. Yeah. So we're really trying to preserve them and ensuring that, you know, based on anything that they're going to try and do on this beach, anybody's fishing, we want to make sure that they understand these crabs are beneficial and we kind of need them to survive. After 450 million years, we can't let these guys we go can. on our watch. They're too precious to us. Their blood is too much of a benefit to us. Just a pint costs about $250,000. Wow. And you can imagine for every time you weren't infected, you didn't get a cough, you didn't get a cold, you didn't yeah. get sick. 
it was thanks yes. to him. If you just scoop right down under him, you'll be able to uh, get him out of the sand and we'll take a closer look. My first crab, where did you go? Give him a little bath so we can get a really good look at this one. Interesting that that telson is short, so Kay, make a note of that. Um, short telson and asymmetrical opisthoma. Asymmetrical opisthoma, I can only imagine yeah, so that back, It's alive and very cute. <laughs> it's tickle in my hands. And is it soft? <laughs> You've worked and studied in Belize, in Costa Rica, you did your Fulbright in Borneo. Wow, How yes. does the biodiversity of all those places most of us couldn't find on a map compare to where we are a few stops away from the F train here? Well, I gotta tell you, it, it's surprising to the average person to see how much biodiversity there is in New York City. And then if you go offshore, mm -hmm. the unseen biodiversity just below the water surface yeah. um, is vast. So while you may not have held a crab in the palm of your hand, donned a pair of sea socks, or joined the ranks of the citizen scientist. Let's see, that was one, two, three, four. A species, hundreds of millions of years in the making, may depend on you for its very survival. And this critter, is right in Brooklyn's own watery backyard.